Hey guys, welcome to another video and today's video I want to show how to build the second part of our cohort analysis using field parameters and also calculation groups. Those two features together gives to the end user a lot of ability to manage and also track data and analyze the KPIs in a different way. So stay tuned for the class. So let's start. So here on my screen, we have the end result from the last class, and now we are going to continue improving that. So the first step here, I will copy this chart and I will display on this page that I already loaded a background image. And the next step here is to create a few more measures. So the measures that I will create are the sales measure. That is a simple measure that will do a sum X from our sales. I'm using sum X because we need to iterate each row of that table. So keep in mind that every time that you use an X function, you will be iterating line by line. So that's the case that we need here. So we need to iterate the unit price versus the quantity. So this way we will have total of sales. The next step here is to create another measure that will give us the average ticket. The average ticket is an average of how much each customer is spending with us. So to do that, again, we need to use a X function. We're gonna use average X. And here on the table, we will pass the values function that values will return a list of unique values from a column. So in our case, we will need to get the customer ID from our sales table, but we don't need them to repeat. So we need to use values. And here we're gonna use the sales measure that we just created. So this way we will get the average here by customer, and by sales. Now that we have those three measures, we can create our field parameter. So to do that, we can go to the modeling, new parameter, and then fields. And here we can, give a, we can give a name, we can call it bar, and then measures. And then we can place here our three measures, customers, sales and average ticket and i don't want to add this on the page because i already have one formatted so now that i just created it will create a new table here as a par measure and we can i will display it here because i already have this field prepared for that and as you can see, we have now customer sales and average ticket, and I can select any of them. But first, now I need to go to my chart, my matrix, and I will replace the customer measures by this field. So now I have the option to choose if I want to check my cohort by customers, by sales, or by average ticket. And this is a really good ability that we can give to the end users because as we can see here we are losing customers over time and that's normal that happens on all the companies but we can also check how the sales are going after time and with the average ticket that for me is one of the most important KPI, KPIs to track here we can check that at the beginning the customers were spending about 500 with us and now in the last months they were expanding more than 1000 per customer and this is a really good analysis that we can track using these field parameters and the average ticket here so the next step is to have also the percentage formatting as we had before so in order to do that we need to get this formula here but instead of creating three times this formula for each of those three measures, we can take advantage of the calculation groups. So to do that, we can go to the model view. We go to the model tab here on the right. 
we can pre, uh, right click here and then use new calculation group it will say that this uh, will discourage implicit measures so if you are using implicit measures they will die so I always recommend to don't use implicit measures always create a measure or do a calculation so I can say yes here this one I will call cohort and I will create another one I need to right click again new calculation item that will be the cohort percentage and here I will place the measure that we copied before and I will copy also that and here where we have customers I will replace I can use ctrl D to get all of them and ctrl V and now we have two calculation groups here one for cohort and one for cohort percentage I can also rename this calculation group I like to use CG and then cohort so calculation group for cohort and now we can go back to our screen and I will place that here so now we have this option to the user also let me change here for single selection and force selection same here because we don't want the user to select two KPIs by the same time so now we we have the opportunity to track for example customers by cohort retention also but it is not formatted yet so we need to go back here and in the return option now we need to use the format comma and then zero percentage and now it's formatted just to quickly explain how calculation group works calculation groups will get the measure that is being displayed on a measure that we already have as in this case is customers and we will apply any other uh, filter that you are using so in this case we are getting the customers measure here and we are applying the whole logic that we built before and the other measure that is cohort is just a selected measure so it's not doing anything and that's exactly what we need because we can choose if you want to do anything or if you want to apply a calculation and the same happens for all the other two measures so that's the good trick of using those two things calculation groups and field parameters are overpower uh, solutions that we have on power bi and now to end that we need to format again so we can go to cell elements applying the background color and don't format we need to do that for the three measures so let me format here every ticket same here but as you probably noticed already if i choose the cohort percentage is not working and there is a reason for that because as i applied here a format every time that we use format index we are transforming uh, our numbers in a string and that's the reason why this formatting is not working because if we go back here and we go to the background color we see that power bi will do this gradient by the lowest value and the highest value and if those values are strings we cannot compare the minimum and the maximum so in this case we need to go back to our cohort uh, calculation and instead of formatting here we can leave as cohort and we have this option here on the right dynamic format string we can activate and we place zero percentage here so instead of using the format function now we are applying a mask and not converting the numbers on, into strings so this will solve the issue now we can format in both the number and the percentage 
and choose which KPI we want to track. And as the last step here, when we check the retention, we don't want to check the zero here, the same as we remove it here by the column, removing zero. But now that we are using uh, calculation groups, we need to do that on calculation groups. So we go back to our measure and here on the return, we can do a switch. The first argument will be true and we need to compare. We need to get the select column, uh, sorry, selected value. And we need to get the months after first order if the return of that is equal to zero, I want to return, return blank. If not, I will return the cohort. And now if, if we go back to the screen, we can now, we can now check that the zero is removed here, but if we click on cohort, it will appear and that's exactly what we need. So I hope you enjoyed this class and in the next video I will show you guys how to create a field uh, slicer here to slice this matrix by dates because if we try to do it now you, you see that the month year from our calendar let me also put it here sales is not blank to don't show all the months and now so select all option if we try to slice remove for example december it is removing only the first value here and that's not the behavior that we want we want to remove the whole line and that's happening because the field that we are using for this matrix is coming from our dimension customers and if we go to our model we can see that there is no relation between calendar and customer. So in the next class, I will show how to solve that issue. So stay tuned.